Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26, and we'll read one verse. I want to talk to you on a simple thought tonight because I think a lot of the a lot of the stress or whatever we go through sometimes is uh, well, of course, I think most of the time is self 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 induced, if you would. We we uh, uh, we put it we bring it upon ourselves. Most of our problems don't come because of life itself, though we get problems through life, don't misunderstand me, but most of our problems we cause ourselves. Amen? I mean, we, by our life, by the things we do, we cause our own problems. Now, I want you to notice here, though, what it says, and then, I, and then I'm going to give you the thought, uh, the thought I want to preach on today. In verse 3, is that thou will keep him in perfect peace, uh, whose mind is stayed or focused on thee. <laughs> Because that, because that he trusts in thee. He said, you're going to keep him in perfect peace, or God's peace, if you would. Who Who's going to stay in perfect peace? The people that are trusting in him. Why? Because their mind is focused on God, or stayed in God. Let's, let's consider tonight that we can have peace through forgiveness. Yeah, and I'm going to yeah. give you some thoughts after a little bit on, on forgiveness. The word, by the way, the word uh, uh, forgiveness... If you would, simply means dismissal. In other words, you, 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 you got something against someone, but you dismiss it personally. You say, no, I don't care if the person apologizes or not. I'm going to forgive them. I, I just made up my mind to forgive. It also means concealment. It means to cover. It means to release someone. Uh, not, not only that, it means to remit uh, no vengeance and no judgment against such person. You decided, I'm going to leave it alone. That's to forgive someone. All right, you don't seek vengeance. You conceal it. You dismiss it. Uh, you decide, I'm not going to do anything about this. Let, let the Lord take care of it. But you yourself are not going to do anything about it. Then, of course, the word peace means rest. And we all need a little bit of that in our hearts sometimes. It means quietness. Uh, it would be nice sometimes to sit down and watch uh, a gun smoke without having to have all kinds of anxiety in your heart. Amen. <laughs> Just sit down and enjoy and enjoy uh, gun smoke or something like that. It, it would be nice to just take a road trip and not have a worry in your heart. Amen. Uh, not worry about what's going on in your life. Not worry about the kids. Not worry about somebody who's mad at you. Just take a little trip and just go and enjoy it. Amen. Uh, that would be nice. It would also be nice because, oh, by the way, because that's calmness. It also means to be at ease, tranquility. But also peace means fearlessness. That means you're not fearful of anything. You're not afraid of, uh, of what God thinks of you. You're not afraid. Why? Because you have the peace of God in you. Amen. And when that takes, that's taken care of, you're not afraid of God. Now, when we, in our lives, there's an absence of forgiveness. When in your life and mine, there's an absence of forgiveness, then we're going to have spiritual defeat, spiritual torment, a spiritual unrest and bitterness, and a lack of joy, and of course, uh, uh, wicked, imag wicked imaginations and also uh, inner battles. Now, when I say wicked imaginations, when you say, well, so-and-so is upset with me, you go home thinking about it. Amen? And you, and you just, uh, all day you think about it. The next day you think about it. You're wondering, well, I know they're upset or, or somebody at your home or a good friend or one of your kids and you say, man, they're upset with me. I wonder what I did wrong and I wonder why they're mad at me. You don't have rest. You don't have peace. You don't have tranquility. Amen? All of a sudden you find, your, you find yourself with torment in your, in your heart and unrest and bitterness. And, and by the way, when you don't forgive, there's also bitterness. So we've got to learn that if we're going to have the peace of God, we're going to have to learn to forgive. Amen. All right, now, let's, let's start first of all in three areas that I want to mention today. I want us to go first of all, if you would, to Romans chapter 5. Three areas where you and I need to look to for peace. Three areas that we need to look to for peace. Uh, what am I going to look, look at if I need the peace of God or if I need uh, peace with God or if I need peace in my soul? Where am, gonna, uh, where am I going to look at, if you would? Now, I want you to notice, or well, let me give you an illustration. When there's war, like let's assume uh, tomorrow the president got up and said, <clears throat> I think, no, I'm kidding, I'm going to be funny. Okay, let's say the president got up and said, uh, there's a war uh, between us and, and another country. We, uh, a war has started. We're going to have to begin drafting a few of our, of our young men and taking them to war. 
Uh, you know and I know there's an unrest in the country. Amen? Everybody's worried. They're worried about their kids. They're worried about the nation. They're worried about the war. But when there's a war going on and all of a sudden they, uh, they, they say, all right, now the war's over. It's peacetime again. Uh, the boys are coming home. Everybody, everything seems good. We're all going to uh, come home and you see the ships coming in. You see people getting off those boats or soldiers getting off the boat. What happens to it? There's joy. Amen? All of a sudden say, man, this, I'm glad this is over. Why? Because there's peace. But there is no joy in unrest. Amen. There is no joy when there's a battle going on. And now let's, let's begin. First of all, where am I going to look? First of all, to have peace uh, with, with the Lord, I'm going to have to look for forgiveness, first of all, above. Notice what it says in chapter 5. The Bible says, chapter 5 of Romans, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I have peace with God. Now remember that, and you've heard me teach enough on this, but there are two kinds of peace in the Bible. There's a, the peace of God, and then there's a peace with God. God gives us peace, amen? But first of all, I must have peace with him because we were his enemies, and now that we got saved, we're no longer the enemies of God. We are now at peace with God. Amen. So let's consider, the, first of all, that I have to look for, I have to look for peace uh, from above. Now, when I say that, keep in mind that what God does when you get saved to give you peace, let's assume you know, you're living in sin and you realize, man, my life's a mess. I should have been living in a lot of sin. I need the Lord in my life. I need something. I need forgiveness from above. All of a sudden you get saved and the guilt is taken away. Amen. Why? Because he's giving you the peace of God. Amen. When, uh, now all of a sudden you don't feel the same guilt that you used to feel. Now all of a sudden you're not afraid anymore. Now all of a sudden you're not ashamed anymore. All of a sudden you're not uh, condemned. You don't feel condemnation or judgment, but you get a fresh start with God. You say, man, God has given me a nice fresh start. Amen. So what happens to us? We begin to have peace. All of a sudden you say, man, God has cleaned up my life. So far as God is concerned, my life's cleaned up. God can give me victory. God has forgiven my sin. The first place I want to look for forgiveness is from God. Amen. Amen. When God forgives me, I can start a new life. That's when right. God forgives me, I got, a, I got a fresh start, man. I can get going again. And all of us, if you've been saved, and your sins were forgiven, no matter how bad you were, you said to yourself, man, I'm so glad God forgave my soul. Amen. And I'm on my way to heaven. Now I know where I'm going. Why? Because God uh, took, care, uh, took care of our sins and, to, and got a hold of us and all of a sudden forgave our sins. Let's go to Isaiah chapter, uh, what do I want to go here? Chapter uh, uh, 57. Isaiah chapter 57, quickly. Let's go there. And I want to give you just a few thoughts here. Isaiah chapter 57. And when you get there, I'll read the first couple of verses here. <clears throat> now notice what it says concerning the wicked, concerning what we're not saved, concerning what we're living like the devil, if you would. You know the times you go, you go home and you feel guilty and you know you messed everything up. The Bible says in, uh, here in verse uh, uh, chapter 57 and verse uh, 20, but the, uh, but the wicked are like the troubled sea uh, in that it cannot rest, uh, whose waters uh, <laughs> cast the... Cast up mire and dirt. Well, that's the way we feel sometimes, amen? We're like the troubled sea, back and forth, back and forth. And it seems like this mire and dirt comes out of our life. And then he says, there is no peace, saith the Lord, to the wicked. So a wicked man cannot have the peace of God. Oh, he might enjoy sin as wickedness, but he doesn't have God's peace. He knows he's not right with God. If something happens to him, he knows he's not right with God. Amen. I mean, I, I can say to people, I don't care what you say. I, I'm a Christian. I don't care what you say. But it does. Say, but but you should care what God says. Amen? Amen. You might not care what I think. You might not care what the second person. But you ought to care what God thinks. Are you? If you're saved, you know it because God gives you that assurance through the peace of God. Amen. And so, watch the next verse here. If you're in Isaiah, if you're still in the book of Isaiah, then let, let me read you another scripture. In 63, if you would, chapter 63. And look at verse, uh, where am I at here? Yeah, verse 3. 63, and again, verse 3 says this. Uh oh Oh, 63, I'm sorry, I was in the wrong one again. Doing the same, uh, doing the, no, 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 no. I went to the wrong one, no matter what. 26, <laughs> 26, Isaiah 26. I'll make you work a little harder there. Isaiah 26. Now watch what Isaiah 26 tells us also concerning, uh, concerning the Lord now. Where am I at here? 26, 26. Are you guys there? Amen. All right, just wait for me for a minute. 
Uh, look at verse 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed in thee because that he trusteth in thee. Do you see what he's saying? If I'm focusing on God, if my mind is focused on the Lord, then God is going to give me the kind of peace that I need. Amen. But it is when I'm focusing on the Lord. Now, what am I going to focus on the Lord on? Or what should I consider on? Consider the forgiveness of God. Amen. Which is a great thing in your life and in my life. Even though we don't see it, it's a great thing for God to forgive us. Amen. Of, sin that, of sin that was going to send us to hell for eternity. But God forgives us of that sin. Now, why does he forgive us? Because he loves us. So remember that you have to make peace with God first. Before you handle anything else, make peace with God first. Amen. Uh, you say, oh, but my life is torment. I feel all messed up. Okay, make peace with God first. Make sure that God's forgiven you. Number two. Not only above us, but look around us, all right? We also, need to, to, we also need to make peace with people around us. When I say around us, listen, it's, it's nice that God forgave me. It's, it, that's a, a pretty thing to say, man, that's beautiful that God looked at me and forgave all of my sin. But what about my attitude toward forgiveness? Amen. Matthew chapter 6. What about my attitude about forgiveness? Let's go to Matthew t chapter 6. And I want you to notice a few things here. As we read what is uh, known of the, for a lot of us as the Lord's Prayer. This is not the Lord's Prayer, but that's what most people call it. And so it's kind of stayed with, stayed with that, all right? Uh, look at chapter, uh, are you there? Now look, look at chap uh, chapter 6 and verse 9. After this manner, uh, therefore, pray ye, uh, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Or that I say, holy be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts. Even, uh, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. You notice that part. Forgive us as we forgive. Amen. Now watch this. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, amen, forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive, but if ye, if ye forgive not men their trespasses, trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your trespasses. Now let's consider for a minute what he's saying. So I, I am to be a person that forgives others. Amen. Not only uh, uh, do I need from above, then I need around from, around us. Amen. We look at we look above us. Now let's look around us for a minute. We are to learn to forgive one another. Right. I mean, uh, uh, somebody's going to hurt your feelings. It's going to happen. Because when you're working with people and people are not perfect, guess what? Somebody's going to hurt your feelings someday. Amen? Amen? I mean, as your pastor, I can honestly tell you, there's been times where people kind of uh, did something and really, really offended me or hurt me. And I thought, man, that's terrible. But uh, they, uh, sometimes I'm sure they didn't mean it. Sometimes I'm sure they did. But nevertheless, I'm not going to spend the rest of my life thinking on it. Amen. I got I, I to gotta leave it and say, you know what? I'm going to just forgive what they did. And if they ask me, I'm going to forgive them. But I'm just going to keep on serving the Lord as I, as I can. Now, let me, let me illustrate for you. A lot of times in your life, uh, for example, uh, me as pastor, uh, I've had people criticize my preaching. So what do I do? Do I, do I cry about it and say, oh, I'm not going to preach ever again because somebody said my preaching was bad. Well, if I'm doing it for the Lord, I'm going to keep preaching. Amen. Amen. Because he, and I'm going to forgive that because I, I'm, sure, I'm sure that sometimes... They don't mean bad, but sometimes they do. But I'm sure that when they mean bad, I'll let the Lord deal with that. The Bible says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I'll recompense. Yeah, I'll let God take care of that. I'm not going to mess with that. I'm just going to let the Lord uh, take care of those things that, that, those things that come out and then, and then God take care of it. Why, why am I going to forgive people? Because I want forgiveness. Right. I want God to forgive me. Amen? Yeah. And, and, and sometimes we don't know how to forgive. For example... Uh, people are going to criticize the way you do your classroom. People are going to criticize the way you do the van. People are going to criticize uh, the way we do the campus. Somebody's going to speak out or don't like something that we did. We can't satisfy everybody. Amen. So just uh, thank the Lord for them and, 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 move, and move on. Amen. Uh, that's all you can do is thank God for the people that, that, uh, that I, I learned a lesson. Let me listen. I, I learned a lesson here some time ago. I was listening to a guy on the, on the, on the YouTube and he was talking about churches and what to do when you have problems with people in your church or somebody gets mad and leaves. What to do with them? 
<clears throat> and he said, well, he said, what I do, he said, I have, I have a letter that's already pre, prefabbed, it's already written, all that. He said, when somebody leaves our church, I send them a letter saying, thank you for the years of service that you were with us. If you ever need anything, please let us know. If you need prayer or anything goes wrong in your life, please call us. And I thought to myself, that's a good attitude to have. Amen. Amen. Instead of saying, boy, I hate those people that left. Let me tell you why they left. They're no good. They're much a liberal. They're much... Why don't I just pray for them? Amen. Amen. They, they belong to the Lord, not to me. So Amen. let me just pray for them. How many times have we seen it here? For example, I can remember a young couple that came in and they used to come to our church for a while. If I told you the name, I think, I think everybody that's been here a while would, would remember them. But I, I remember they came for a while and, and uh, she had about uh, 20 babies, I think, and she was going to have another one. And they, they wanted one of those baby showers. Now, I'm sorry, but I thought baby showers were only done the first time. I didn't think we had to do it for every single kid you had. So here, they, here it is. Uh, uh, I said, yeah, well, I'll tell the church. And you guys did. You guys did a baby shower for them. Well, they wanted a crib. And they wanted to, well, we, we don't do all that. You know what I mean? The church doesn't buy you a crib and a car to take your kid to school. We don't do all of that. And they got upset. And I said, well, I'm sorry that you were thinking we, we had to get all that, but we, we can't do that. And then all of a sudden, uh, one day they walked in, and I could tell they're already in a bad mood. And when you got somebody already in a bad mood, forget about it. Amen? Don't mess with it because they're already in a bad mood. They walked in, and uh, uh, David Davila was standing out there. And David Davila shook his hand. Now they, they'd been coming here for about a year and a half or so, and he forgot his name. Now, David Davila was getting old. I forget your name sometimes now, <laughs> and I've known you 30 years. But as they're, as they're walking by, they're like, what's your name again? And he got mad. He walked in here and said, they don't even remember my name around here. So they left to another church, and another church, and then the pastor stole the money from the church, and they went to another church. And every time I see them, they teach what they tell their kids. This is the greatest pastor we ever had. This was the great. Well, why don't you come back and serve the Lord? Amen? Right. But now that they're ear, their kids have earrings and, and all that stuff, they don't want to come back. Now, why? Because they know they're going to hear a whole different preaching than they did over where the liberal church was. And, I mean, they've been from church to church to church uh, through so many. I, I wish I could tell you some of the stuff they've been through. But I'm just saying this. They didn't know or they wouldn't learn how to forgive people. Amen? They didn't learn that everybody can't please them, that they, they're not the only ones in town. And the truth is uh, that the people loved them. But they didn't know how to forgive. What happened to them? They've been going from church to church ever since. Amen. I mean, one mess after another. One. I remember she chased me down at the at the uh, uh, what is that thing called? The, the the wharf at the wharf in Monterey. I was walking by there. Actually, I was making a delivery for uh, for uh, for a company I work for. I was delivering some mats in there, and I went over to deliver some mats. And I, the first time they sent me there, I'd never been there. They said you're going to help some guy with the route in Monterey, so I went to help him. And I was on my own, but I was helping him finish his route. And when I got there, I'm walking with some mats, and, and she, uh, she, this girl sees me, and she starts chasing me and saying, Pastor, uh, Brother Patrick, Pastor, wait a minute, wait a minute. And I looked back, and I immediately knew who she was. I said, oh, how are you doing? She goes, oh, I'm doing real good. Uh, we were thinking about missing your church. I said, well, come on, visit the church anytime it's open. And so uh, she said to me, yeah, because uh, she started telling me what the pastor had done and what uh, all the things that had happened. And, of course, they came here. and told, I remember they sat back there and told the kids, oh, this is where it all started. This is where we knew about salvation. This is where we knew. And, of course, that's the last time they came. <laughs> what I'm saying to you simply is when you don't forgive, you're going to be bitter. Amen. Right? When you don't forgive, it's you that's paying for it. Amen. Because if I get mad at you at this church today, if I got mad at you so mad that I said, you know what, I resigned. I got news for you. I just got out of the will of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because I did it in anger. What happened to Moses and Aaron when they, told, when, they, when they smoked the rock? You remember that? God got angry with them. Why? You've got to learn not to let your anger rule your life. Amen. Uh, to be honest with you, and I don't mean it because I'm your pastor, but I'm going to be honest with you. To be honest, I'm not that bad of a pastor when it comes to scolding you. Some pastors scold you. Listen to me. Some pastors, they scold you. They, they don't care if you leave or don't. They, if they don't like some, you're going to get scolded. And you're going to get scolded bad. And that's terrible to me. I don't believe a pastor ought to be that way. But today, in our day and age, that's the way, that's the way it is. Now, let me move on. So first of all, 
I need to make sure that I get forgiveness from above. Secondly, uh, 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 excuse me, above us and then uh, from around us. Remember, people around you also need forgiveness. And then the last one, and this is a hard word for me to pronounce, but I needed another A and I found it in the dictionary, atrocious us, all right? Atrocious simply means wicked or evil. Somebody who's, who's bad, who doesn't do right. Atrocious us, but that simply means us because we're wicked. Amen? I need to forgive myself. Amen. Now I want you to understand, once God has forgiven me, once I learn to forgive others, I need to learn to forgive me. Amen. And, and, and the reason I say that is because a lot of the time, people spend their time banging their heads on the wall because of sins they committed a long time ago that they can't help anymore. Mm -hmm. One, you, once you, you might have committed in ignorance, sometimes we commit it knowingly. Amen? Amen. We, we, like the, like the, the, the Bible teaches, some of us, we sin with the lights on. Amen? We know the light. We know what to do with it. But instead, we sin. Well, you can't keep picking yourself for the rest of your life because you sin with the light on. And you can't do it because you sin in darkness. We failed our kids. We failed the, the church. We failed this or we failed that. Well, you can't spend the rest of your life kicking yourself over that. As a matter of fact, I'll just give you a few thoughts here. Let's go to 1 Timothy, if you would. 1 Timothy, and I'm going to show you something here. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, by the way, 1 Timothy chapter 1. In chapter 1, the Apostle Paul makes a statement there that I think is important for all of us to, to recognize. In, the ver in, in verse 12, notice what he says in verse 12. He says this, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. I thank, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has enabled me for that he counted me faithful putting me into the ministry who was before a blasphemer and a, perse and a persecutor, injurious, and, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly and in unbelief. Now I want you to start, well look at the next one. Uh, uh, and, and the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundantly with faith and with love uh, uh, with, which is in Christ Jesus. Now let's consider for a minute that the Apostle Paul says, hey, this is what I used to be, but God forgave me and I'm thankful for that. He didn't say, I'm burdened over it. Boy, I hate myself. He just said, I'm thankful that God forgave me. Amen. And be because of that, and His grace is abundant on me. I'm going to go ahead and do the do the will of the Lord. Now let's go, if you would, here in the same, uh, to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. I'll show you something there. So remember, first of all, uh, Paul, uh, Paul remembered who he was. He never forgot that he had uh, uh, messed up. And by the way, remembering is okay. Reliving is not. I said this morning, amen. Don't live your sin. Just remember that you messed up. Now, be, because remembering is good. Because if you remember how you felt, listen to me. If you remember how, how wicked or how bad or how, how convicted you felt, you won't go back to it. Now, watch the next one here. He says in, in chapter 4 and verse 8, here's, what, here's why Paul had victory. Notice what he says. He says, uh, well, let's try verse 5, since we're there anyways. No, let's try verse 6. I like that one better. <laughs> For I am not ready to be offered the time of my departures at hand. I fought a good fight. Now, wait a minute. Didn't he just finish saying he was a persecutor and all of that? Mm -hmm. But now notice what he says at the end of his ministry. I fought a good fight. I got saved. The Lord forgave me. And I fought a good fight. He's talking about his own ministry. He said, I have fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness with the Lord. The righteous judge shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but to all those that love his appearing. Now, wait a minute. He went from reminding himself who he was to what he is now. Amen. What God had done in his life. All right. You're going to have, you're going to have failures. You're going to have sins and failures. They're going to come in your life, whether you like it or not. But the truth is, you don't have to stay there. Now, let, let me uh, give you a couple of more scriptures. Now, why then do I feel the way I feel? Why is it that instead of having victory, when I think of myself and how atrocious that I am, why do I feel uh, so, so bad about myself? Why do I look at my failures and feel so bad? Well, it ain't because God didn't forgive you. Because God did forgive you if you were sincere when you repented. It, it, it's not because it, it's not because you're not forgiving others around you, because uh, you're doing your best to be a forgiving Christian, a loving Christian. Uh, now you're doing your best. Uh, so what is it then? Well, one of the reasons is, and I, I won't go to it, but you can find it in Romans, uh, excuse me, Revelation 12 and 10. You remember the Bible says, "Woe unto them that dwell on the earth, 
For the accuser of the brethren has been cast down. That's the devil. So the devil has come to the earth. But then he says that they, that they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. So let's consider this. The devil's going to come to you, and he's going to remind you how bad you are. And you're going to feel guilty. But you're not listening to the Lord. You're listening to the devil. Because the Bible says when God forgives, he does what? He forgets. Amen. And so the, it's not the Lord reminding you of your sin. Who is it then? It's the devil. Amen. The accuser of the brother. And what's he doing? He's making you feel guilty because he knows if you got guilt, you got defeat. Amen? You're going to be Amen. defeated. You can't, you can't do anything for the Lord. You're defeated. You feel bad. You don't feel good about, about who you are. So what am I going to have to do then? I'm going to have to learn to forgive self. Amen? Secondly, I'm going to have to realize I'm not the greatest sinner in the world. Everybody sins. Amen. We all fail. I mean, if you were to ask me, Brother Pat, would you like to go back in time? I'd like to go back to probably uh, 19, uh, well, let's say uh, 19, 1994 when I first got here. I'd like to go back to that and start over again. Amen? And, and, and know what I know now. <laughs> I do it all differently. I would teach my kids differently. I would spend more time with them teaching them. I would just spend, spend time showing them the, the scriptures and, and helping them to serve God. I would do things differently. Amen. I wouldn't do it the way I've done it. Amen? Because I got a lot of failures. Now, when I see one of my kids that's not in the will of God, I, I blame myself. I blame myself. And I'm not careful. I start beating myself up. But I got to learn that God forgave me. I'm not the, the, the only person that's ever failed. So I got to get up and say, okay, now let's try this again. By the way, if you got small kids, it's a good time to say, I'm going to do it right. Amen. You, you're not going to get a second chance. Right. Amen. You're not going to get a second chance. So remember, you're going to have to learn to forgive yourself. You have to say, you know what? I, I can't go back and fix it, but I can go forward and fix it. Amen. How am I going to fix it? Through prayer through witnessing, through doing the right thing. I can, I can go forward and, and, and change this thing. And it's amazing how God does do it. Amen? I mean, God can save people. Uh, God can save people anytime. I, I was at a, and you've heard me tell, tell this story, but I'm going to tell it again. I was at a, at a uh, meeting one time. I almost did that uh, uh, with a basketball, but I'm, I'm not a good basketball player. But a guy, a guy uh, even, even uh, Kylie beats me at, when she bounces the ball. She even beats at me. But <clears throat> I saw a guy grab a basketball, and he began to bounce it. <clears throat> and he said, uh, he said, he played basketball when he was in college. He said, let me share something with you. He said, when you played basketball, this is the way it is. And he talked about himself when he was at a, in a team, and they were going to win the state or something like that. He said, I'll never forget. He goes, I, I, got, I got the last shot. I had the basketball. I got the last shot. He goes, and I mean, everybody's hollering my name from our school, and they're all rooting for me, and I'm going, oh, man, I got to make this one. Boy, I, he said, all of a sudden, he said, I got too nervous, and I shot. He goes, in my mind, I was saying, don't do it. But I, you know, he said, it's too late. I went ahead and took the shot, he goes, and it hit the rim of the, of the basket and bounced off. Another guy got it, ran the other way, and made the basket. And they beat us by a couple of points. He said, I stood there when everybody was walking away. <clears throat> I stood there thinking to myself, I wonder if I could ask the coach, can I have a do-over? <laughs> There's no such thing. He lost the game. Amen. In this life, we don't get a do-over. Right. So give it the best shot you got. Amen? Amen? At least, I mean, you might fail in some areas, but at least you gave it a good shot. Amen. At least you said, you know what? I got the peace from God. God forgave me. I forgave others. I learned to forgive others. I learned to treat others properly. And not only that, I learned to forgive myself. And I learned to keep going. Amen? Because if Amen. you don't forgive yourself, all you do there is sit down, watch Gilligan's Island, and get all upset with yourself. Amen? Amen? When you have to say, no, wait a minute, I'm not any worse than nobody else. I just got to get up and hope the Lord gives me a fresh start, a new chance to be able to get everybody that saying that I can not get and to be able to fix everything that I can fix. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here. We thank you, Heavenly Father, and ask tonight that you'll just be with us, speak to our hearts. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.